I think I've got this picture as good as it's ever going to get, short of me adding some custom magnets. I did play around with that briefly by just holding a magnet in free space. And I think if I did mount one up here and one down here, I could stretch out that horizontal linearity without crushing it. But uh, what I really want to do is get this one off the workbench and then bring up another one and see how the horizontal linearity is in that and just kind of compare and contrast it before I go about making any modifications. So right now I'm putting it all back together. Cleaned up all the plastic. I tried using a little bit of semi-chrome on these pieces but with all the pitting and the loss of whatever that finish is, probably a thin brass plating, whatever. Eh, it's only so much you can do, I mean. So I'll just leave it like that. And uh, what I'm doing now is reattaching the handle here. There are metal bushings that go in there. And I uh, figure I'll put a little grease on there. You can see the uh, kind of the grooves there from where the uh, inner parts here were rubbing against it over the years. I figure a little grease will help out with that. And once I get that all secure, then it's the fun part of putting the clear plastic front back on and reattaching that band around the outside. Remember, it was all rusty. Here's the metal strap that holds the front cover on. If you recall, it was quite rusty right out on both sides, so I used some uh, rust remover on that and got it all removed. But now I want to treat it with something so it doesn't start rusting again. You can see the uh, steel was originally treated with something that turned it black and provided a protective coating. So, got me thinking that uh, I've had this gun blue kit for a while and I've never had a chance to try it so I might as well give it a shot now. Look through the instructions briefly and first steps are to clean it and remove rust. Well, I've removed the rust pretty well but uh, I haven't cleaned it so I'll uh, give it a quick go over with this cleaner degreaser and uh, blue and rust remover. I'm just going to do the suction where the bare metal isn't going to do the whole thing. And then uh, you apply uh, stuff. And uh, like I guess you leave it on for just a short while, 30 to 60 seconds, no longer. And you neutralize it by running it under some cold water and wipe it dry. And well, see how it goes. Well, it's not perfect, but uh, it actually turned out better than I expected never having used this before. A few areas uh, didn't get uh, darkened as much as others, a little splotchy here and there. I imagine it's because I didn't clean it as thoroughly as I should have, plus in some areas like here it's pitted from the rust that was here so there's no smooth surface for the bluing uh, gel to adhere to. So uh, I guess that'll do. And then they give you this stuff. Uh, rust barricade. Uh, Imagine it's some kind of oil or wax you can rub on there to uh, inhibit rust. So give it a wipe down with that and uh, install it. Okay, so I've got one head unit fully restored. Now, what do I do with it? Well, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Well, I think it's going to go with this guy, which is the first one I ever got. It's the one I've been calling the predicted tandem number one in my restoration videos. Also, I guess I could call it the Fred Mertz set. This is the back from it. So this, this chassis already has been restored. I think it's the first chassis I got working, and it's back in the cabinet now. I need to reinstall the knobs. I got one knob here. These are the reproduction knobs. They're very nice quality reproduction knobs. Got to dig up the other two that are around here somewhere. And then for the antenna, well, I guess I'll just leave it out for now. Figure out what I want to do with the various bits and pieces I have of damaged antennas. Blonde is the only one that has an actual intact antenna. Uh, I'll pop the back back on and uh, let's fire this up for one last look. Well, one last look at this set, and then 
Hopefully this one will not be far behind. Here it is, all together, ready for a power-up test. Although this CRT can go anywhere within about 25 feet of the base with this long cable, I think the reality is most of these CRTs ended up right on top of the base unit. Here are those nice reproduction knobs. Install. So here we go. So now I can finally see what this channel indicator looks like. It's lit up. So it kind of illuminates the numbers to this either side of it a little bit, but this is on channel three. As a matter of fact, I was thinking maybe I ought to do this once a year. Alright. Once a year? Yeah. It takes a little while to warm up so. and the I screen to go full with. Oh sure. Sure, but I got a better idea. Just before you take that week to get you all number The one thing that's different about this than most of these sets you've been seeing me do with these old admirals and whatnot is that this is about a decade newer than these sets. Aluminized, much higher voltage in the CRT, so you can watch this with all the lights turned on in daylight, no problem. Whereas the other sets, I'm always turning the lights off when I should demonstrate them. And uh, even better, this, of course, being the uh, newer CRT, it's really bright. It's also the first time I've ever actually heard the internal speaker. I've always been using this test speaker up on the workbench. Plenty of volume. You are watching. Please, the TV. Memorable. Entertainment. Television. The Dick Van Dyke Show. So that's going to wrap up this project. I hope you enjoyed this series on restoring a Philco predicted tandem from about 1958. Hopefully there will be another one to join it very soon. Thank <laughs> you.